Welcome to another edition of Jet Setting. Scott Billick here with Ted Wyman, both with the Many Big Sun and special guest uh, Wes Gilbertson from the Calgary Sun slash Calgary Herald. Um, Ted, we'll start with you today. Uh, obviously, regular season starts for the Winnipeg Jets tomorrow night uh, against the visiting Calgary Flames. Um, a, a lot of news today. Kevin Jevaldeoff spoke. Nikolai Ehlers is up in the air with a COVID protocol. Uh, not quite sure of his availability tomorrow. And then we're going to have Trevor Lewis. Uh, he's on the team, uh, signed to a one-year deal worth uh, 750000 coming off his professional tryout contract. And the opening night roster, which is kind of not really a set in stone thing, but uh, that was also released today. So lots of news out of, out, out of Winnipeg today. Ted, uh, what, what, uh, I guess, what do you make of, uh, of the big chunk of it today? What I make is that I need more Advil. I mean, in all honesty, that was like listening to Kevin Sheveldayoff talk about LTIR and the salary cap and all that kind of stuff made my head pretty much explode. Um, and, and it's so much more confusing this year with the COVID uh, protocols that are involved. So, you know what, I'm just going to leave that. They've set their 21 uh, man roster and they've got five people on the taxi squad. Trevor Lewis will be added to the mix. Looks like Matthew Perot will come back off the taxi squad and be on the team for opening day. And it does look like there's a possibility that Christian Veselainen uh, could get into the lineup because Nikolai Ehlers is in what they call COVID protocol related absence. They don't have to to say much more about what that means but it certainly doesn't sound very good and uh, that could mean anywhere from him missing no time to up to 10 days if it's a positive test so yep. uh, so a bit of uh, you know that's what this season is going to be like though I mean it's just obvious that there's going to be a whole lot of of fluidity about this season there's going to be schedule changes there's going to be lineup changes and every team's going to have to deal with it as they head into a 56 game sprint over the next 114 or 115 days for some of the teams. Wes in Calgary, I'm thinking it's probably pretty similar. Um, the, the Jets start this season right where they left off playing the Flames and they're pretty bitter about it. We'll get to that later, but how are things looking with the Flames? Yeah, well, and, and you know, just to follow up on your point, we haven't had any uh, COVID protocol related absences here in uh, Calgary, which is a good sign, but uh, let's give the NHL credit for a major improvement on unfit to play. At least uh, we don't have to guess now what their unfitness is. Uh, you know, this is the, the world that we live in right now. And um, yeah, the Flames are fully healthy, which, it, which is a good thing injury-wise and, uh, you know, other, I guess, health-wise. And, and yeah, you know, a, a lot of familiar faces certainly from that series against the the Jets the play in in the summer bubble but some significant changes for the Flames too uh Jacob Markstrom obviously uh ex of the Vancouver Canucks is the big off-season addition um you know the Flames haven't had a, a star goalie since Mika Kiprasov and and they really feel like like this is the guy so a lot of excitement in Calgary about him uh Chris Tan was Chris Tan of ever a Manitoba Moose I believe he was. He was. Yeah. Was so, yeah. Ex, uh, ex Moose, uh, Chris Tanev, also uh, by way of the Canucks, added to the blue line and, and some depth signings as well. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of, of talk in Calgary about what would change. And while it's not the, you know, Johnny Gaudreau has been traded or Sean Monaghan has been traded, that uh, some especially angry fans were maybe looking for this offseason. Um, you know, there's going to be seven guys in the lineup who didn't play in that play in series against Winnipeg. And, and that's significant. Six free agent signings. Uh, and then Yusuf Valimaki, who missed all of last season due to injury. So, um, you know, familiar faces, but uh, but a lot of uh, a lot of change for this Flames team, too. And uh, they're pretty excited about the depth they've accumulated. And, you know, as you guys know, 27 teams or so think they're a playoff contender right now. And, and it's time to find out. Yeah. And Wes, I'll circle back to you just because, you know, the last time both these teams played was in the playoffs, as you alluded to. And, and, and you know, the, the biggest, you know, storyline for Jets fans, because they, you know, they lost this series in four games, was, you know, Matthew Kachuk taking out Mark Shifley five minutes into the game. And that kind of turned the tide in the series, at least from a fan perspective. There won't be any fans in the building chanting, you know, obscenities towards Matthew Kachuk tomorrow. But um, their yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah, at their TVs for sure. Yeah, but I, I guess 
uh, and, and I'm sure, you know, Kachuk is only answering these questions because they're being asked to him. And, and a lot of these players have probably, but I, I imagine, you know, Kachuk, and he did speak today, and assuming that he, um, there is some, I suppose, excitement from the Jets to be able to play this team again and kind of exact at least a little bit of revenge from what happened, uh, you know, during the, I guess it was the summer, I'd like to say spring, but it's been a weird year. So last summer. Yeah, I mean, Matthew Kachuk, as you said, he's been asked about it. You know, he did say that he expects Winnipeg to, you know, to be fired up, to be frustrated about, I think he said, what happened last summer. And <laughs> the, I perceive that to be the way the series ended. I, I think the important thing to to remember is Matthew Kachuk and Mark Scheifele, that incident, and then, you know, Paul Maurice's reaction to it and everything that followed. Like, that was game one of a four-game series. And it didn't get that hot after, you know, like we saw, I think Kachuk dropped the gloves with Blake Wheeler at one point. It's not like there wasn't any bad blood, but you know, we're not talking about sort of the same thing that we saw in Calgary where Kachuk and and Zach Cassian got into it with 10 minutes left in a game or, or whatever it was. And you kind of knew it was going to bubble over in the next one. Like this has had room to bubble. So I, I don't, you know, I don't, anticipate that the Jets are going to be looking for a ton of revenge. The one thing I'd say about Matthew Kachuk that makes him so fun to watch and cover is he could, you know, if they, if they're out for blood, he's going to enjoy that, you know, that brings out the best of them. Uh, and so, you know, I think he's fine either way. He's, he's a guy that is going to, you know, be asked about revenge and bad blood and all this business 35 times in the Canadian division, I think. So he's fine with it. But, uh, you know, to think that suddenly the Jets are angrier than they were in game two of that series, I I just don't buy it. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, guys, honestly, you have to look at that. And Connor Hellebuck was the guy that basically took the bait today and talked about bad blood. And he said, I hope there is bad blood. But then when he the goalie always says that comments, <laughs> when he delved further into his comments, he's talking about the series for sure and how that ended up going because it just you know the Jets got pummeled really in the series. They lost their two of their best players and they just weren't able to keep up. They weren't able to keep up physically. They weren't able to keep up on the scoreboard. And Connor Hellebuck got outplayed by Cam Talbot in that series. There's nothing that they took from that series that they were happy about, and for sure that's why they're talking that way that they want to get back and they want to beat the Calgary flames for knocking them out of the playoffs last year. If there is some situation where there's players on the Winnipeg jets wanting to get after Matthew Kachuk already in game one of this season, well, I'd say Kachuk's already won because that's what he wants to do. And if that, if the jets get goaded into that, it's going to be a long, is it nine game series against the flames this year? Uh, you know, Wes, I mean, honestly, I think it's going to be, this is just one of the small storylines of what's going to be a very long, but very quick season in both uh, respects. And I think that's going to be such a key thing to remember kind of everywhere. A comment Brad Trilliving made kind of setting up training camp, but he, you know, he was being asked by media just about the uniqueness of a Canadian division and everything that it entailed. And he talked about controlling your emotions. Like, it's easy for us in the media to get excited about, you know, Kachuk Cassian 10 times and, you know, Kachuk versus his brother nine times and and all these, you know, different rivalries that we're going to see throughout the season. But, you know, at some point you got to get points and get in the playoffs too. So uh, our emotions going to be ratcheted up a little bit because it's opening night and, and because it's a rematch of a play in series and stuff. I think so, but uh, you know, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't expect a bunch of gloves on the ice at uh, at puck drop. That's for sure. And and Wes, I'll I'll bring it back to you because, you know, we've looked. Everybody's looked at different who, where people have the ranked in this all Canadian division, and um, you know, at least here in Winnipeg, it's kind of either the Jets are going to be in that fourth spot or they're going to kind of maybe be outside of that spot. But Calgary seems to be all over the map from. Some people have them first in the division. Some people have them in last. It, it's kind of a weird thing. And and likely, because you kind of alluded to it earlier, a lot of change in that team, different goalie, um, uh, you know, a lot of different things. You know, is Johnny Goudreau going to have the year? Uh, you know, obviously, Matthew Chuck has is, is, is kept on getting better, it, it would seem. And I think he was on pace for a, a career year last year, if not for the 
for, for, for the shutdown due to COVID. But I, I guess the question is, where do you see, I mean, you've seen them in camp uh, and you obviously know this team inside and out. Where do you kind of see them in terms of finishing in this division, given that it seems like all over the map for a lot of, you know, kind of the pundits out there? Yeah, I'll, I'll just share this. Um, for starters, you know, we did our, our chain-wide uh, predictions yesterday and, and then, uh, you know, it comes to light that no one's picked a Canadian team and, and emails are flying around and, you know, why, why is no one picking a Canadian team to win the Stanley Cup? And, and, you know, my response was this, it's that, you know, no one wants to be the dummy whose Stanley Cup pick doesn't even get in the playoffs. And I honestly don't know <laughs> that there is a guaranteed lock to make the playoffs in the North division. I, I think the flames are a playoff team. Um, and certainly there will be a ton of disappointment, um, and probably some, some fairly significant changes if they're not a playoff team, but, but I really see six playoff teams in the North division. Uh, and, and as I go through it, uh, I, I don't know, I, I, yeah. I can come up with reasons every team gets in and doesn't get in. So, you know, the flames expect to be a playoff team. I think that they have on paper, a top four team in the division, but anywhere from, first to sixth certainly wouldn't shock me about any of those teams that aren't named Ottawa senators. You know, the one thing, uh, the biggest change in Calgary, and I know you, you talked about Matthew Kachuk nearing a career high for points last year. So what they've done is they took Elias Lindholm off the right wing on the top line and they made him their number one center. And so him and Matthew Kachuk are going to play for starters with Dylan Dubé on what I'd call Calgary's top line. Now, Johnny Gaudreau and Sean Monaghan are still there. A lot of people call that the top line. It doesn't matter. The point is they're trying to make Paul Maurice and every other coach in the NHL look and say, okay, are we going to use our top checkers against Gaudreau and Monaghan or are we going to use them against Lindholm and Kachuk? And that's the type of balanced attack that this team hasn't had in a long time. And I think that's what they're most excited about uh, in addition to Jacob Markstrom is that they feel they're a pretty tough team to match up against. They've taken their top six and, and, you know, spread it across the top nine. And if their depth signings perform the way they need them to for, for that to work, uh, it's going to make this a, a pretty tough team to stop in a division that I think is going to probably feature a lot of five, four hockey games. Ditto about the Jets. <laughs> I yeah. mean, realistically, what you're saying about the way those standings are going to go, I feel the same way about Winnipeg. I'm sure the people in Vancouver feel the same way, Edmonton, uh, Montreal. Toronto seems to be a darling team with a lot of people right now, but, you know, they've kind of got a history of not uh, living up to the hype. And so we'll see how that ends up going. But also ditto about the top six. You know, Winnipeg's got a great top six this year with Wheeler and Shifley and Ehlers when he's healthy on the top line. And then you've got Kyle Connor had 38 goals last year on your second line. With Patrick mm -hmm. Line, you had 44 goals a couple of years ago and a really good responsible center between them and pa Paul Stastny. I think that the, the, I think teams are going to have the exact same issues with the Jets in terms of trying to pick your poison of those two lines. Yeah, and I, and I think, too, I mean, a lot of it's going to come down to consistency because the Jets have just had so little of that in the last year and, and, and well, last, last season and even in the second half of, of the 2018-19 season based on just injuries alone, like, you know, the, the, I, I don't know how many, there was very few times last year they iced all six defensemen that they, that, that they wanted to start the year with. Uh, and, and very few times, you know, their forward contingent was where it's at. It's interesting to look at the Jets now and see, you know, they actually have four kind of legitimate lines to the point where you're, are, you're, you're thinking about not playing Matthew Perot. You're thinking about, you know, all, that sort of thing. And now with Nick Ehlers potentially, well, not injured, but having COVID, um, or maybe not having COVID, whatever it end up, ends up being. I mean, that throws a wrench into things a little bit as well. But um, I, I, guess, I guess we'll end it off here. But one question, I mean, we've had zero preseason games, a little bit of scrimmaging, I'm sure, with both teams. Obviously, the Jets have been able to do it. So there hasn't been a lot of actual kind of game. How sloppy is it tomorrow? What do you guys – how sloppy do you think these first games are going to be? I know there's one already on right now uh, that started. Um, but, I mean, how how, how – how, how weird will tomorrow's game look after, you know, X a number of months off so far? I don't mind grabbing that one first because I was writing about it a bit today and the rustiness and the sloppiness, 
I think will show through, but it's such an interesting situation because there, there's going to be some rust and some sloppiness. And yet, as Connor Hellbuck said today, every game is like a playoff type feel to it because it's so quick and every game is so important against these divisional teams. That's going to make it really interesting to see early on how these teams have adjusted with no preseason games and only inter-squad games. Uh, and hey, you know what? To be honest, fans probably like sloppy hockey. So I think that might be uh, make for some fun early on. Wes? I, I think you nailed it. You know, I've been saying for years, one of the reasons the World Juniors is so great to watch is that in addition to the intensity and, and the pride is the kids make some mistakes. And, you know, credit to even the guys you think are bums in the NHL, they don't make a lot of mistakes. I mean, this is pretty... This is pretty polished hockey, but you get some mistakes, you get some animosity, uh, you have the excitement of opening night, albeit not the same as uh, it would be if the the building there, one of my favorites to watch hockey and in the NHL was was buzzing. Uh, it's not going to be the same, but you know if you're sitting in front of your couch uh, with a six pack tomorrow, I think you're uh, you're going to be. <laughs> Did I say in front of your couch? Sit on your couch, but <laughs> but have the six pack either way. That's so it, it's going to be a fun night. Yeah. So that'll be a good way to end this off then. Drink beer, watch hockey, have a good life. Yeah, for sure. I, for obviously, uh, you know, exciting day for both teams tomorrow. Uh, exciting day for both the you know, fan bases tomorrow. Uh, it'll be an interesting matchup and one of the first of 56 for both teams. So for Ted Wyman, Wes Gilbertson, it's Scott Billick. Thanks for watching.